Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Welcome to my channel. Remember to like and subscribe. In this video, we're going to talk about cyclic subgraphs, and we need to remember what a cycle is. A cycle is a graph made of a series of connected edges. A cycle begins and ends at the same vertex without hitting any vertex twice. We also need to remember what a subgraph is. A subgraph is a subset of the edges and vertices from a larger graph. For example, graph A on the left has a subgraph that includes H, I, N, K, and J, and all of the edges that connect them except these two in the middle. So graph B is a subgraph of graph A. In this case, B happens to be cyclic. It's a cycle. So we call graph B a cyclic subgraph of graph A. A cycle has to have the same number of edges as vertices, and each vertex in the cycle has to have degree two. Here I've drawn five subgraphs of graph A. Graphs S, T, U, V, and W are all subgraphs, but not all of them are cyclic. Let's figure out which are cyclic subgraphs. Let's start with graph S. So notice that graph S has one, two, three, four vertices, and it also has one, two, three, four edges. Also, each of its vertices is connected to two edges, so each vertex has degree two. You can also tell by inspection. All cycles begin and end at the same vertex, and they only visit each vertex once. They go in a kind of a circular pattern, but sometimes it's harder to tell. So graph S is in fact a cyclic subgraph. Let's look at graph T on the other hand. Graph T still has four vertices, but it has an extra edge. One, two, three, four, five edges. That also causes vertex I and vertex J to have degree three. So this is not a cycle. So graph T is not a cyclic subgraph. Let's look at subgraph U. Do you think it's a cyclic subgraph? If you said no, you're correct, because once again, we have four vertices, but we have five edges. And we can also observe that vertices I and K don't have degree two. How about subgraph V? One, two, three, four vertices, one, two, three, four edges. All of the vertices have degree two, and you can tell looking at it that it kind of travels in a little loop. So subgraph V is a cyclic subgraph. Now let's look at subgraph W. Subgraph W has five vertices, but only four edges, which causes it to fail to loop back around. So it's definitely not a cyclic subgraph. We can also see that vertices J and M have degrees one, not degree two. So subgraph W is not a cyclic subgraph. In this example, we're going to categorize and name any cyclic subgraphs that we can find or say that there aren't any. Remember a cycle begins at one vertex, travels through the graph never hitting any vertex twice, and comes back to the original vertex. For example, we could travel from vertex one to vertex two, from two to three, from three to four, and back to vertex one. This cyclic subgraph would be called a quadrilateral because it has four edges, like a quadrilateral polygon. Or you can simply say it's a foregone. To name any cyclic subgraph, you start at any one of the vertices contained in it, like in this case, I'll just naturally start with vertex one, and then you list each adjacent vertex in either direction. So I can either go from vertex one to two or to four. I'm gonna choose to go clockwise to two, comma, and then from two we go to three, and then from three we go to four, and then from four, we go back to one. We don't list one twice, it's already listed. We just put parentheses around the list. So within this larger graph, we have the quadrilateral cyclic subgraph one, two, three, four. Let's see if we can find another one. So another one that might stand out to you is from five to six, six to seven, seven to eight, and eight back to five again. This is another quadrilateral or foregone. This time I'm going to name it starting at vertex six 
and I'm gonna go counterclockwise just to demonstrate that that's still a perfectly fine way to name the cyclic subgraph. So we're gonna go from six to five and then to eight and then to seven and then back to six. So I'm gonna put a parenthesis. Now I'm pretty sure that those are the only two cycles, cyclic subgraphs within this graph. I'm gonna actually spread out the graph and draw it a different way so that hopefully you can see what I'm talking about a little bit better. So remember, it doesn't matter where we place the vertices, all that matters is that the vertices, the same vertices are connected. So here I've drawn the one, two, three, four subgraph, and then now I'm gonna draw the six to five to eight to seven, back to six subgraph. And then the only other edge that's inside of this graph is the connection between two and six. It's not possible to have a cycle that starts on the right side and goes over to the left and comes back because then we would cross through the vertices two and six twice. Let's say I started at vertex five and went to six and then the, to two and then to one and then to four and then to three. I would have to go back to two to get back over to this side to hit five again, which breaks the rules for being a cycle. So we can say with confidence that one, two, three, four and six, five, eight, seven are the only two cyclic subgraphs of this particular graph. Here's another example. Categorize and name any cyclic subgraphs of the given graph or state that there are none. So this particular graph has no cycles. Just to make it clear, I'm going to separate the two components that this graph has. This has the vertices F, I, and G, which are connected. And then it also has the vertices H and J which are connected to each other, but there's no connection between these two pieces of the graph. This side definitely doesn't have any cycles because there's no way to start at one vertex and end up back at the same vertex without crossing through a vertex twice. And the same goes for this piece over here. So I can state that there are no cyclic subgraphs. In this example, we're asked to identify one triangle, one quadrilateral, and one pentagon in the given graph. Now there are definitely uh, multiple ways to answer this question. We only have to find one triangle, for example, and there are many different triangles within this graph. For example, Q to N, N to O, and back to Q would be an example of a triangle. So let's go ahead and when they ask you to identify it, they mean name it. So we're going to give it a name. We're gonna start with one of the vertices. It doesn't matter which one. So I'm gonna start with Q and then we're gonna to go to O and then to N and then we get back to Q. So we put a parenthesis. So one triangle that's in this graph is Q O N. But I also could have chosen triangle N O P or I could have chosen triangle M N P. But one thing I could not do is say that M to O to P and back to M is a triangle. This is not a triangle because I would have to skip over vertex N. There is no edge connecting M and O. In other words, M and O are not adjacent. So that series of letters would not make a triangle. Now let's find one quadrilateral. So a quadrilateral is going to be four vertices that are connected to each other in a sequence. So actually M to N, N to O, O to P, and then back to M would be a quadrilateral, even though it looks like the shape of a triangle, because in graph theory, we're not talking about the shape, just what the connections are. So I'm going to list quadrilateral, M to N, N to O, O to P, and then back to M again. Now, another person may have listed the quadrilateral Q, N, N, P, P, O, O, Q. But we were only asked to list one of them, so either one would be fine. And now we're asked to find a pentagon. So pentagon means a five gone. So we need to find five vertices that are connected sequentially. So for example, I might choose to go from M to P, P to O, O to Q, back to N, and then to M. Notice since there are only five vertices in the whole graph, we would have to use all five of the vertices 
to form a pentagon. M to P, P to O, O to Q, Q to N, and back to M again. So to summarize, a cyclic subgraph is just any subgraph that forms a cycle, beginning and ending at the same vertex, never hitting any vertex twice. Cyclic subgraphs are named just like cycles by listing sequentially the vertices, and they're categorized just like polygons by the number of edges. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video. You can also subscribe to my channel, Miss Hearn Mathematics, for more math videos.